You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil and I'm here in the studio with Jeff and Ken. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm in one of those moods, though, where I feel like I'm rushing around to get nowhere, but uh, should be a good day. Too much coffee. Maybe. It's nice outside, that's for sure. I think that's what it is. So you're a rambling man today? Yes. Just like Dwayne and whatever the other Almond Brother is. Yeah, the uh, the Almond Brothers. Jimmy. Do they have an Almond Butter yet? Because I feel yeah. like they'd make almond, a lot of... Almonds, the Almond almonds. Brothers, Almond Brother. The, the yeah. Almond Brothers, Almond Butter. There you go. I like that. That should be a team name in the future. The Almond Brothers, Almond Butter. Or maybe yeah. it shouldn't be a team name. Yeah, you, well, it's uh, agree to disagree. Yeah. How you doing, Ken? Uh, it's nice to have you back in the studio. I know your ghost was floating around the studio. We felt your presence last week, but it's nice to have you in the flesh. Yeah, thank you. And by you. in the flesh, I mean totally nude, as usual. I am uh, totally nude, and uh, I was just experimenting with uh, making the movie The Haunting, starring Catherine Zeta-Jones, a reality. So I was trying to see if I could haunt the studio uh, but do it as well as uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, even though she wasn't a ghost in that. But It was very effective. I did feel possessed at certain points. Okay. I well, felt good. those Swayze hands rubbing against my side. So. Well, that's all I hope for, is everyone feels my hands wrapped around them at all times. Uh, Matt, you're from uh, from L.A. Not really, but you're in L.A. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> Your hometown. Uh, doing okay. Yeah, it, it just sounds like it's nice there, but it actually rained here today. Yeah. Um, <gasps> But, you know, like the piece of garbage I am, I'm only happy when it rains. So nice. That's fine. Nice, nice. Yep. Uh, always uh, have some great uh, 90s references there. So um, anyway, uh, we have a very special guest here to join us today uh, because it's going to be a fun game that uh, I'm actually hosting. I haven't hosted in a long time. Hey, and all about nice. that. Can't wait for these yeah. paragraph long questions. I know. Mm. It should be fun. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. But... You've been writing it for three months. We're very impressed. Uh, now, even longer than three months. It's been 10 years in the making. Wow, six years before we started this show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, our our very special guest today uh, is an Oakland Five supporter on Patreon, which we truly appreciate. Uh, and she's joining us today from Houston, and that is Mary Price. How are you, Mary? Hi, um, I'm really good. Uh, a little nervous, but um, this is exciting. It's really cool to be here. We're really happy to have you here. And of course, we appreciate you supporting us on Patreon, but also as a listener uh, who's been listening to the show for a long time. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I've lived in Texas all my life. Um, I'm a special education teacher um, and I play a lot of Pokemon Go um, and I have five cats. <laughs> so I don't know. That's all I do. Play Pokemon Go, play with my cats whenever I'm not at work. <laughs> That sounds good. Uh, I will say I'm glad that we're life. over the internet because Jeff and I would both be uh, in the grave, in the grave with all the cat hair. Oh and the wow! Dander. Yeah. Um, so it's good. To, uh, we're hope hopefully we'll see them at some point, but I'm glad that they're not in the studio because it'd be a very different game today. Yes, Instagram <laughs> has changed my opinion of cats. I'm okay with them now because I can enjoy them without interacting with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I share the same thought of the Egyptians. Uh, the cats are my god. I just can't go near them or I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you very much also for uh, the hard work that you do uh, in the special education area. Uh, we have you know, a lot of people that we know that work in that, that uh, arena, and um, it's uh, just great work uh, that you do every day. So thank you for that. And uh, Matt, uh, you're going to partner with Mary today. Is that right? Yeah, we figured we're both uh, pretty avid Pokemon goers. Uh... Picked one of our favorite Pokemon, the Porygon. I think we're going to be never Porygon to give you up. All right. Never Porygon to give you up. So i got to make sure I can say that uh, 20 times. Ken and Jeff? And uh, we are going to take the uh, evolution of one of our favorite Pokemon, the Slowpoke, and be the Slowbros. That's right. Mostly because we're just gym tired from the going back this week. <laughs> All right. Enough about the gym. We did this last <laughs> week. <laughs> Slash earlier today. <laughs> 
Just to peel back the curtain. <laughs> yeah, what is the slow bro version of gym tan laundry? Is it just not really going anywhere? What? Well, you're slow bros and you know GTL gym tan laundry. I don't know what that means. It's Jersey Shore. It's oh. a it's a it's a Jersey Shore. Well, yeah. You, well, you can't make a Jersey Shore reference to me and like expect we're me get to it. like. Well, now I now I have no confidence feedback. that you will do well on this game because it's a lot of pop culture. <laughs> do we have a Snooky rules reading? Cue it up. Let's go. Triviality podcast is two rounds of 20 questions worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there's a special swing round by this week's host. In the final round, players wager points they've earned for a chance to become the cream of the crop. The cream will rise at the top. Oh, yeah. It turns out we do not have a Snooky Rules rating. She denied our cameo <laughs> request. But we did have Gilbert Gottfried, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, it all worked out in the end. Uh, okay, so today's game that I wrote uh, is a themed game. Ken had a game uh, maybe a month or two back um, that had a, a secret theme. And we had uh, listeners submit what they thought the theme was. I think we had uh, maybe six, four? four or six people that, that got it correct. I believe it was four. Four, and then we put their names in a hat, and we had a raffle. No, we rolled a dice. Yep. And All right, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna correct everything that you're saying. Today. Okay. We rolled uh, a dice. We rolled a physical <laughs> die because that's, right. that's what it was me a and D4. Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what me and Jeff like to do. It and, seemed right. And the winner was Colin Steinhauer. Yeah. So congratulations. The secret theme was in fact my hero academia characters. So good job. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who you know wrote in. And uh, same thing with this today. It's a secret theme. Just write in. You have two weeks uh, from the date of this release, whenever it is released, and uh, we will put your name in a hat if you get it right and uh, raffle off a T-shirt to you. So. All right, everyone. Uh, let's start with question one, as you do in trivia. Good place to start. Better known <laughs> in recent years is an app connecting you with your favorite celebrities who provide custom video messages. Cameo, who we were just talking about, is also the name of an American funk band whose highest charting single, released in 1986, gave us what two-word phrase that no matter where you say it, you'll know you'll be heard. Yeah, we're locked in. That's good. Any ideas, Mary? <sighs> um... I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> uh, my first thought was word up, but I don't think that's right. I don't know. Do you want to go with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go with that. Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't think I have anything better. All right, Matt, come on. Tell me what's the word, the word up I went with word up mm -hmm. points to both teams. It is word up. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I, was, I was in the studio <laughs> waving my hands in the air. Like I don't care. So. Yeah, and uh, Mary, you may have uh, heard it with a uh, very particular inflection. The uh, tell me watch the word, word up. That's okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we great. weren't getting away without you doing that. No, that's uh, all the questions here are written. Right. Just for me this to. That's how this show works. Yes. <laughs> it's all opportunity. They all have a built-in impression. <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, uh, points to both teams. Great way to start the game. Let's go to question, Next question. two. Christopher Walken. <laughs> To a bar. <laughs> I actually did have a Christopher Walken question, but I cut it. So we'll maybe we'll, we'll bring it in later. Uh, question number two: Dating back to at least 190 BCE in China, and at times taking on an occult, mythical, or artistic significance, puzzle boxes of recreational mathematics that contain numbers which add up to the same total in each column, row, and main diagonal are known as what? The yep. origin of that is different. Okay. I I, I, okay. I, yeah. All right. We're locked in. I mean, it, it sounded like a Sudoku puzzle, but is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember back when newspapers still existed. This was yeah. one of the things that people would do at work. Um, that's what it sounds like. So are you good with just locking in with Sudoku? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so our puzzle was that Sudoku is Japanese in origin in terms of naming convention, but we are saying Sudoku. Unfortunately, no points to either oh. team. Uh, Sudoku uh, usually deals with uh, nine squares uh, that go up from one to nine. Um, this is actually called uh, magic squares. Uh, and magic squares, oh. all column row and main diagonals uh, add up uh, to the same total. So they're kind of a unique, um, I guess, puzzle uh, that I, I found. I thought was really interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, moving right along to question three. We're going to stay in China a little bit. In Chinese culture... 
There are four plants that represent the four seasons and are collectively referred to as the four gentlemen, or the nickname of triviality. <laughs> they include the plum blossom, the orchid, the chrysanthemum, and what other plant, an important staple of Chinese, Japanese, and Vietnamese cultures that has been used in a similar sounding nickname to the 1970s Steelers defense, but for different ideological reasons. Let's go with the first one. Okay. We will lock it in. Oh, boy. So they're locked in. Um, so, Mary, let me just lay out what I got so far. Okay. Uh, 70 Steelers defense. 70 Steelers defense was known as the uh, Steel Curtain, which is similar to the Iron Curtain, which I think is what he's getting at for the different ideologies. Um, but I don't know how anything else plays into the Iron Curtain and... So we can just name a flower. Uh, what kind of, what kind yeah. of flower do you like? Tiger lily? Um, that's one. Yeah, that's that's cherry one. Cherry blossom was my first. Yeah, I thought cherry blossom. I thought maybe, I know nothing about football. I thought maybe if the 1970s Steelers defense was really bad, they might be the pansies. And I was like, is it a pansy? But no, <laughs> they don't clearly usually, not. They don't usually they give were, bad, uh, bad groups of <laughs> athletes nicknames. Right. You have to earn a nickname. You would you you would not want to call Mean Joe Green a pansy. Uh, yeah, he would not take. He would not time give you that. his uh, t-shirt <laughs> or his jersey or whatever. <laughs> if you give him a uh, cup, maybe. Uh, you want to lock him with cherry blossom? Yeah, yeah. I that that sounds good to me. Yeah, that's all we could come up with as well. So we said uh, cherry blossom as well. Good guess with Cherry Blossom. I will say Matt was on the right track. So the 1970s Steelers defense was known as the Steel Curtain. He mentioned the Iron Curtain, uh, but this term was actually derived from the Iron Curtain. Um, the name comes from the demarcation between the communist states of East Asia uh, and the capitalist and non-communist states of East, South, and Southeast Asia. The answer is bamboo. So it was known oh. as the Bamboo Curtain. Mm. Did you say flowers? That makes or just sense. Plants. Plants. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty dumb of us. <laughs> Whoops. Well, let's move right on to question number four. Epitomizing the phrase "talk the talk and walk the walk," French high wire artist Philippe Petit became famous for a trio of unsanctioned performances taking place in Paris, France, at the Notre Dame Cathedral in 1971, Sydney Harbour Bridge in Sydney, Australia, in 1973, but perhaps most famously. At what North American complex? Yep. Slow bros are locked in. What are you guys thinking? Was it the World Trade Center? Between Tower 1 and Tower 2. That's what I was thinking. I don't know. Okay. I'm okay with that. We can we can lock in with that if you're good with it. Okay. Okay. It looks like uh, never uh, Porygana give you up. Or is it Ponygon? Porygon. Porygon give you up. Okay. So never <laughs> Porygon give you up uh, locked in with World Trade Center. How about slow bros? Yep, we said the same thing. There was a uh, documentary called Man on Wire, uh, very famous, and also a dramatic film with Joseph Gordon-Levitt called The Walk, I believe, and uh, that's what we said. Both teams receiving points. It is the World Trade Center. All right, well, uh, moving on to question five. Named after the island where they were once in abundance, the second largest island in the Mediterranean, this herring-related forage fish is also the namesake for a children's game that is effectively hide and seek in reverse. Okay. Uh, we talked about it. We came up with sardine. Is it the sardine? Okay. And that, that's your locked in answer? Yes. Okay. So they're locked in with sardine. Jeff, you're convinced that Sardinia was not the second largest island, but we couldn't come up with another fish, right? Yeah. So we want Sardinia. Sardine. For sardines. And it is sardines. Points to okay. both teams. Yep, looking at a Matt, uh, Cyprus is uh, way smaller than I thought. All right. Well, after five questions uh, in the first round, it's tied at 30 points. And just for the listeners at home, uh, your theme answers are Word Up, Magic Square, Bamboo, World Trade Center, and Sardines. All right, let's move right along to question six. I'm going to give everyone a U.S. state tri-bond. So that means I'll give you three facts about one state, and you just have to name what state I'm talking about. This is a state in the United States. Fact one. Its capital city contains an airport named after civil rights activist Medgar Evers. Fact number two. 
It was the first state to ratify the 18th Amendment prohibiting the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors. And fact three, John Grisham's first novel, A Time to Kill, takes place in this state. All right, we are locked in with a guess here. I know a little bit about mud grabbers, but the other stuff we're lost on. Um, I know. I'm not really sure about this one. Um, do you have any thoughts? My first thought was Mississippi. Um, okay. When I think, I think he said civil rights activist. That's the era, the area that I tend to go to. Um, that makes sense to me. I don't have, I mean, I don't have a better, anything else I would say would just be a guess. So I'm fine with Mississippi right. if you are. Okay. We can lock in with Mississippi. Yeah. We actually said the same. Um, when it comes to civil rights, uh, fights, we think about the South, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, those sorts of places. And I seem to remember some weird fact about Mississippi and prohibition laws as well. So that's what we said. Okay. As the star of A Time to Kill, Matthew McConaughey says, I, yes, yes, I, yes, yes, I. Yeah, it's Mississippi. I was just going to ask you how to spell it. <laughs> that's one of those ones, uh, one of those words where anytime I look up something about Mississippi or I'm writing Mississippi, even now as an adult in my head, I go, ISS, ISS, IPPI. All right. Well, you guys are actually doing really well. I'm glad. I was worried that uh, this game might play a little bit too hard, but uh, strong competitors today. It's taking a lot of reasoning, honestly, but we're landing it. Yeah, you are. I'm, I'm trying to give you clues, but I'm also trying to put you in the wrong direction just to see. All right. Number seven, Super Famicom and Mega Drive might sound like rival kaiju, but are in fact competitors of a different variety whose rivalry started when they were released in Japan in 1990 and 1988, respectively. You might know these titans of their industry by what other names? So I think these are the mid-90s consoles. So it's probably Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, right? Early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Okay. And uh, Porygon? Uh, we're going to say the same thing. The Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Both teams getting points. Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. And which side of the fence uh, do we all fall on? I was a Sega Genesis owner myself, so... Mm. Uh, I had both, but I think I preferred Sega. Sega. Oh, I had uh, neither system. I just had my classic NES. Um, I'm the same as Jeff, actually. I had neither, just the classic NES. All right. There you go. All right. A uh, house divided today. But we all appreciate the video games, right? Yep. Yep. The, as, as I call it now, I sound like... The I'm video 80. games. Th the video games. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. Are you playing your video games again? No. Uh, number eight. Um, we're going to go back to the Tribond well. Uh, and this will be sort of a uh, traditional, I, I suppose, movie Tribond, but I'm calling it a movie occupation Tribond. I'm going to give you three movie characters that all share the same occupation. And I just want the name of the occupation. Uh, I'll Wedding give you planner. Wedding planner is correct. I'll give you 10 points if you get the answer off of just the character names. But if you are having trouble, I'll give you five points uh, if you need me to give the actors behind those characters. Make sense? Okay. Okay. All right. Here are your three characters. Lloyd Christmas, Hoke Colburn, Alfie Elkins. I think we're good here. Okay. I know the first one and uh, I think I know his profession. What do you know about Lloyd Christmas? It sounds familiar. Uh I I I don't know I don't know anything about Lloyd Christmas. I'm pretty sure this is from uh, Dumb and Dumber. I believe he's, th these are dog groomers. Oh, okay. Yep. I could have sworn Lloyd Christmas was a driver, like a chauffeur. Am I wrong there? Mm. Tell me, tell me about it. Okay, so their their answer was dog groomer. Yours is a driver, driver. of some sort. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you remember. In Dumb and Dumber, speaking of Lloyd Christmas, who was portrayed by Jim Carrey, um, he was chasing after, um, I can't remember the character's name now, but he was chasing after uh, the woman he loved. And, he, and uh, when they said he couldn't park there, he said, it's okay, I'm a limo driver. So uh, yes, yeah, chauffeur mm -hmm. or limousine driver is the answer. Um, Hope Colburn is Morgan Freeman from Driving Miss Daisy. And Alfie Elkins was a character portrayed first by Michael Caine and then by Jude Law in the remake. Can't believe you didn't throw Argyle in there. I was going to, but I thought that you would get it right away. Yes. Uh, yeah, Argyle. I heard you like limos, right? <laughs> All right. 
The dog groomer was the partner. Whoops. Yeah, that was Jeff Daniels. That's right. Although I do like the idea of Argyle mm. from Die Hard being a dog groomer picking up John McClane <laughs> who doesn't need a dog groomer. Yeah. I asked for a limo, Argyle, not a not a shave. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, I'm neutered. Okay. You can express those glands while you're at it, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. What? That's Jeff's fanfic of Die Hard is John McClane getting, getting his glands expressed. <laughs> Just imagine this. So in Die Hard, the famous scene of John McClane with you no know, no socks or shoes on, having to walk across the glass. But in the the remake, he's he's rubbing his butt on the floor across glass. <laughs> no, <laughs> you guys are the worst. Thank uh, you. Oh wow. Slash best. Next. All right. Here we go. Uh, question number nine. Uh, I have one more tri bond. This is the last tri bond of a tri bond of tri bond questions in this game. I'm going to give you three clues, and all I want to know is, what do they have in common? Inner Circle, Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett, Rick Mahorn and Isaiah Thomas. As far as the Pistons, and that's it. You're right. Let's just say Pistons. I have no effing clue on this one. Yeah, so we're going to say Piston. Okay, Pistons over here for Slow Bros. Let's go to Porygon. <laughs> So Rick Mahorn and Isaiah Thomas were Detroit Pistons. They were the bad boys. Is it possible that the middle two is the characters of Will Smith and Martin Lawrence and bad boys? That's possible. Sounds possible. I've never actually seen bad boys, <laughs> but that even. sounds really good to me. I don't know where the inner circle is. I'm thinking it has to do with AEW wrestling because he, he has an affinity for wrestling. Um, but I'm not sure if that's what it is, but I think if you're cool with it, we can lock in with bad boys. It's quite a good answer. And again, we just said piston cause we're dumb. You were on the right track, Ken and Jeff. So Rick Mahorn and Isaiah Thomas <laughs> not really. were, were Detroit Pistons, <laughs> but as Matt said, they were, uh, under the group known as the bad boys, Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett are Will Smith and, uh, uh Martin Lawrence's character from bad yeah. boys and inner circle was the group who sang the theme song, bad boys. Okay. Uh, question number 10 to end the first round. Mariah Mitchell, a trailblazing feminist and scientist, was the first woman elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1848, the only woman to have that honor until 1943, and was celebrated for being the first American with a discovery in what scientific field, one that saw her teach at Vassar College after being recruited by founder Matthew Vassar himself. Here's your clue. She wasn't alive to hear Casey Kasem's American Top 40 sign-off each week but Mitchell would have taken the words to heart. Yeah, so sadly, um, this is one we're probably going to miss. Um, I know I've heard this lady before, but I can't put it together, and I don't know the sign-off, so we're just going to say it was in the field of chemistry. Okay, chemistry for the slow mm. bros. Uh, Porygon, feel free to talk it out. Do you remember Casey Kasem's sign-off? I don't. Uh, I Wish do. I um, okay. It's... Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for those stars. And uh, now you know the rest of the story, which was not his sign off. But he also said it a lot. Um, so I'm pretty sure that this is a astronomy, right? Not astrology. <laughs> I'm right. I'm yeah. Down. Yeah. Astronomy. Yeah. Cosmology um, or cosmetology? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Astronomy. That sounds good. All right. Unfortunately, it was astrology. No, I'm just kidding. It was astronomy. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, the sign off, as Matt said, was keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. After round one, the scores are fairly close. The slow bros have 60 points and never pori gonna give you up have 70. And for the listeners at home on today's theme, here are your first round answers again. Word up, magic square, bamboo, world trade center, sardines, Mississippi, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, Limousine or Chauffeur, Bad Boys, and Astronomy. So after round one, I uh, just want to take a moment to thank Mary once again for being a Patreon supporter, uh, because without her support, we wouldn't be able to continually grow our show. Jeff, uh, we've had a lot of fun the last month or two um, just meeting new people who are uh, brand new Patreon supporters, but also fulfilling a lot of their perks. Um, and uh, I just feel like uh, it's just been a, a fun way to uh, connect with everyone and, and what can people get if they want to join us at patreon there are so many options i'm not even going to list them but uh, pretty much for your support some of our favorite things uh, we have uh, signed posters and other memorabilia including 
uh, things that we put in various different boxes at different sizes, and our bonus episodes, which are one of my favorite things to do so every month. So many bonus episodes, guys. Yeah, yep. I think we did the math. It's like 30 hours or something. Well, I was going to say we're doing two a month now of just Patreon-exclusive bonus episodes, not to mention our regular main feed ones. So you get that whole backlog yep. if you sign up for Patreon. Yeah, and we uh, couldn't do it without our patrons, so that's why we're so appreciative and want to give so much back. And uh, again, as Neil said, if you want to join uh, our guests, uh, just do so patreon.com slash podcast. And speaking for Matt over here. Uh, for just $100 a day. $100 a day. Yeah, $100 a day and <laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> can feed a you, you two can feed a podcaster that ice cream with the gold flake uh, in it that he really wants in New York. If someone wanted to donate a hundred dollars a day, uh, I'm, I'm sure I would relieve their anal glands for that much. So, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> if that's the perk you wanted, Ugh. Matt, uh, you came up God. with uh, the crop drop, and and you've been helping us uh, in that area as well. Uh, are you going to be coming up with any other harebrained schemes coming up soon? Here, do you think? <laughs> harebrained schemes. <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm... <laughs> I'm always scheming. Uh, we're going to be trying out some live entertainment, starting with the UNICEF one that's already recorded and up and we did. So it's possible we might get some live Twitch games, possibly for Patreon members, maybe Ooh. with fabulous prizes. Ooh. Stay tuned. Stay tuned indeed. Uh, that sounds great. Well, thank you once again, Mary, and for everyone else who supports us on Patreon. Join us at patreon.com slash triviality podcast. Today's swing round is called Hip Hop Puri. Okay, so I know everyone here doesn't like hip-hop as much as me, at least in this room, but I have a list of 10 hip-hop artists. I'm going to give you a clue as to who the artist is, so the fans of hip-hop will know it probably right away, but then I'm going to merge it with a clue that has an answer that shares the name with the artist, or is at least very, very close, um, that should you know help you get to the right answer. So it might not be exactly right, but it'll be close enough where it should give you the answer. So here's an example. Queens-based rapper who's always into club or at the candy shop and prefers to pay with only legal tender featuring the face of the 35th president. 50 Cent. 50 Cent is correct. So that's how it's going to work. Does it make sense for everyone? Yes. Okay. All right. And here are your 10 clues for the swing round. Number one, Rough Riders first lady who will blow your mind as a glossy egg-shaped Pixar robot. Got it, Ken. Number two. A Tribe Called Quest's most abstract member who is mostly used as a generalized trademark for ceremony removal. Number three. Trinidadian American who takes the Black Street to get her home so she can watch her namesake seek revenge in a 1974 blaxploitation movie with Pam Greer. Number four. Duo from East Point, Georgia, who are constantly apologizing to their mother-in-law about being rejected and ostracized by their social group. <laughs> Matt like that oh my one. God. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Number five. Former Diddy collaborator and rapper turned ordained minister turned rapper again who feels so good to be welcomed back he could just be the ornamental club and symbol of royal authority to the UK parliament in order for it to pass laws. What? <laughs> Number six. Hip-hop collective headed by a Detroit rap god who rolls into parties to help D&D players get damage for large weapons carried by raging barbarians. Mm. Number seven. <laughs> Grill-mouthed king of crunk who snapped his fingers and turned the East Side boys into merry men with his quarterstaff by his side. Number eight. I like, okay. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Interracial rap trio who loved playing Pop Goes the Weasel on the hot corner without Mike Schmidt or Wade Boggs to hold them back. Number nine, 606 multi-hyphenate who followed God's plan to attend university in Des Moines, Iowa, studying male ducks. And number 10, South Central alternative hip-hop group who was running but never passing me by on their way to check out the latest surrealist single panel comic by Gary Larson. All right, we will uh, chew on these for a little while, like uh, so much cud, and we'll be right back. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga, Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. And we are back with our answers. Um, yeah, we'll see how we did here. I'm not so sure. I'll say I in think the... Matt did well. 
I think Matt also did well, but I think Mary was the star of the team over there because I, I saw her mind racing with some of these hip hop artists. <laughs> I was, I was trying, but, uh, I, I literally, I got one and then Matt's like, I have them all. So that, that actually worked out though. Matt didn't need any clues. <laughs> no, not really. All right. So let's go over these questions and answers. Uh, number one was Rough Riders first lady who will blow your mind as a glossy egg shaped Pixar robot, uh, slow bros. We said Eve. I uh, also said Eve. And Eve is correct. Yeah, you know, when I think of someone who's going to blow your mind, I think of Eve. That is right. Uh, number two, uh, A Tribe Called Quests, most abstract member who is mostly used as a generalized trademark for ceremony removal. Slow bros? I don't know where this one came from in my brain, but uh, eventually it's, we landed on Q-Tip. All right. And Porygon? Mm -hmm. Not quite my favorite rapper, Kleenex. We also said Q-Tip. Q-Tip is correct. Uh, the abstract clue was his nickname uh, from the group. All right. Uh, number three, Trinidadian American who takes the Black Street to get her home so she can watch her namesake seek revenge in a 1974 black exploitation movie with Pam Greer. So I started by naming a bunch of black exploitation movies with Pam Greer, and Neil said those are all the wrong ones, and uh, we have no idea. So we just said Cardi B. <laughs> Um, we kind of kicked around Rihanna for a little bit, but we're pretty sure she's from Barbados. Uh, I think this is Nicki Minaj. Ooh, no points for either team. Uh, this is going back a little mm. ways, uh, sort of, uh, I guess the first Renaissance of female rappers along with Lil' Kim and, and, uh, whatnot. This is Foxy Brown. You said it, Ken. You just didn't go with it. Oh, that's right. Didn't know that was a rapper. Yep. Foxy Brown. And then the Blackstreet Clue is never uh, heard of her. one of her most famous songs is with Sorry. Blackstreet. Sorry, Foxy. Never heard of you. All right, number four. I think everyone got this one. It's one of my favorites. Duo from East Point, Georgia, who are constantly apologizing for their mother-in-law about being rejected and ostracized by their social group. Oh, hey, yeah, we got it. Uh, Outcast. And yeah, this was the one that I knew. Um, we also said Outcast. Outcast is correct. Uh, moving along, this guy, uh, one of my favorites. Um, glad he's back, at least in some way. Former Diddy collaborator and rapper turned ordained minister turned rapper again, who feels so good to be welcomed back so he could be the ornamental club and symbol of royal authority. The UK Parliament needs to pass laws. We have no idea what the hell you're talking about. So we said uh, Kingsman, the very famous rapper. Mm. Kingsman. Kingsman. <laughs> uh, known for running from a giant reptar cartoon. From That's how I remember him. Uh, I believe this is Mace. Mace is correct talked about mace as a possible answer for the next one <laughs> uh and great segue there so number six hip-hop collective headed by a detroit rap god who rolls into parties to help DD players get damage for large weapons carried by raging barbarians this one took us way too long to figure yeah, out Yeah, we know too much about D D, and it was to our detriment so we kept naming different weapons that barbarians could have and then we said rolls into parties and we were like oh he's talking about the die and mm. so we said d12 Mm -hmm. which is what barbarians roll for damage. Oh, I didn't know any of that, but uh, yep, D12. D12 is correct. Uh, your clue there, Detroit Rap God, uh, as in Eminem, who is part of D12. Who's that? He's an up-and-comer. <laughs> up uh, I'm glad that uh, at least you got the clue there because I was so worried that that was not the right thing for D&D, &D, but at least it worked out. So We know where your head's at. Yeah, in the sand. Number seven. Grill-mouthed King of Crunk, who snapped his fingers and turned the Eastside Boys into merry men with his quarterstaff by his side. Lil John. <laughs> and we also said would, Lil uh, John. <laughs> yep. Uh, whether you want to say Although Lil, I would argue that Paul Wall was the King of Crunk. Just so you know. Ooh, hot take from Matt. Uh, well, yeah. Whether you want to call him Lil or Little, uh, the answer is Lil John. Number eight, uh, interracial rap trio who loved playing Pop Goes the Weasel on the hot corner without Mike Schmidt or Wade Boggs to hold them back. And I will say this is the hardest one because it's the most obscure. Not sure what language this question was in, um, but we said Migos because we have no clue. I believe Pop Goes the Weasel was about Vanilla Ice. They were not big fans of him. I'm pretty sure that this was the Boston-based trio, House of Pain. Ooh, great guess. Uh, unfortunately, no points. Uh, their most famous song, uh, Pop Goes the Weasel, you might you may have heard it. It's Pop Goes the Weasel and the Weasel Goes Pop. Anyway, um, uh, the clue there was the hot corner. Mike Schmidt and Wade Boggs all played third base. So the answer is third base, but the mm. group is B-A-S-S. -S. Oh, right. 
Yep. All right. Number nine, I think everyone got this one. 606 multi-hyphenate who followed God's plan to attend university in Des Moines, Iowa, studying male ducks. Yep. Um, when I think of uh, male ducks, I think of Drake's. So we said Drake. Mm-hmm. I love the Drake. We said Drake. Drake is correct. I do not love the Drake. I still attest that he's a creep. <laughs> Ken's favorite rapper. False. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, our final question here uh one of my favorite uh groups uh haven't heard from in a long time south central alternative hip-hop group who was running but never passing me by on their way to check out the latest surrealist single panel comic by gary larson uh we don't know so we tap on this one i thought for sure this was the most obscure one i'm pretty sure that this is the far side mm, that's where i heard the name gary larson it is the far side correct after the swing round, the scores are still fairly close. We have Slow Bros with 90 and uh, Porygon with 110. And I do just want to make a note uh, for the theme players at home. Uh, the swing round itself was part of the theme, uh, not the individual clue. So don't worry about looking too much into the, the actual answers of the swing round. Just overall part of the theme. All right. Round two, question one. There's a little sort of geography slash history. Residing in Kings County, the most populous county in its state, and named after a Dutch village in the province of Utrecht, I don't know if that's correct how you say it, what city and borough, originally independent before being consolidated in 1898, would actually be the third most populous city in the United States had its consolidation never happened? Caesar, you what's have up? a good idea? I think so, yeah. All right, let's lock it. Do you have any idea, Matt? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm pretty sure that it's it's one of the either like Long Island, Brooklyn, or Manhattan. Um, most of those were named after, I think, Dutch regions. I think I think Brooklyn makes the most sense to me because I think it's on the outskirts, not like in downtown New York. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds right, and I I think I seem to remember hearing that it's like like. Real, like a lot, like a lot of people live there, so it makes sense as, like, would be the third most populous city. So yeah, I'm good with Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of the five boroughs of New York, this is the most populated. We said Brooklyn. Everyone's getting points. It is Brooklyn, New York, number two in the round, in the MCU, or as some people call it, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Tony Stark always found a way to insert a playful nickname for his many teammates and opponents. Point Break, Shakespeare in the Park, and Lebowski are just a few of the names that he gave to Thor, the god of thunder himself. In Captain America Civil War, what fitting nickname did Tony give to the newest and youngest Avenger, his protege, Peter Parker? Uh, we're locked in. My husband is going to kill me for not remembering this. What did he call him? <laughs> I was going to rewatch uh, uh, America. Okay. Captain America Civil War, but I accidentally watched Gods and Generals. Oh, that's a common mistake, actually, but uh, I, I don't prefer Captain America Civil War. I, I prefer Ken Burns' Captain America Civil War, mm. which is just a documentary with a lot of push-ins <laughs> on photos. When Steve Rogers awoke yeah. from the ice. I can't remember. <laughs> Was it something to do with, like, his, like, costume kind of looked like underwear? Did he call him under ruse or something like that? Or am I making that up completely? Under ruse, that's the only thing I have, and I and I'm probably just making that up entirely. Sounds to me like Mary uh, dug deep there, and uh, Tony Stark made fun of the outfit that he himself designed and uh, called him under ruse. Under ruse oh is my correct. God. Great job! I got Mary. that right. What a poll! <laughs> oh wow! Okay, <laughs> I'm very surprised. Uh, like Peter Parker, you must believe in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and you will achieve your full potential. All right. Uh, number 13. Uh, I talk a lot about footy on the show, and Ken said to, to quit it out. Uh, so today I'm going to change it up a bit and mention rugby. The South Sydney Rabbitohs, a professional Australian rugby league team in the National Rugby League, calls Stadium Australia in Sydney Olympic Park home. If the Rabbitohs were actually comprised of rabbits, what would a more appropriate name be for their stadium, which could also double as a location to house their fine china? All right, we're locked in with a dumb guess because this is too much for me to process. Um, is, is it a hutch? 
well, because I was like, well, what, what's another name for China cabinet, which is what I always called it. And I think it's a, a hutch. So I wrote wrote down cupboard and you wrote down curio. Yes. And what, which one did you want to go with? I, I, either way, I don't think we're right. All right. We're going to say cupboard. Okay. Well, um, the answer is a name for uh, somewhere that you would house rabbits, uh, sort of like their pen. Uh, and also, uh, as Mary said, somewhere you put your fine china, it's called a hutch. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Great reasoning on that one. You're right. right. Two for two, Mary. All right. Uh, let's move on to number uh, four and see if Mary can continue getting those stones. Maybe. Named for its shape, Mount Corcovado, which translates into English as Hunchback, features a sharp rocky peak that holds the world's largest Art Deco sculpture completed in 1931 and was designed in the image of what familiar subject? All right. We're going to lock in on this one. I think it said it was made in 1931. I don't know if That's the cool. year helps at all there. Is it is it is it the Jesus that overlooks um, Brazil or whatever that is? Is that you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, maybe it is. Do you want to go oh. with that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually. That makes sense. What is that one? I can't remember. What is the name of it? Well, just the yeah, Jesus, the I guess. I forget. The Jesus yeah, sculpture in Brazil. Yep, you only need the subject. So. Yep. Okay. Yep. Jesus. Yep. I believe this is the Christ, the Redeemer uh, sculpture. That's uh, Jesus. Yep. A uh, clue there. Designed in the image, or I suppose in his image, the answer is Jesus, okay. Christ the Redeemer. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to question five. You you all are doing uh, very well this round, so maybe I'll see if I can stump you here. Number five, Amenius Sleepus is not a spell used in Harry Potter or a John Milton epic poem, but is a track from what Green Day album that won a Grammy Award for Best Alternative Music Performance and remains their highest selling album to date? I have a good idea. Okay, let's go with it. Um, I'm pretty, so I don't think that their early stuff got a lot of love from the awards type stuff, but I think American Idiot kind of did. Yeah. And that would be my guess. That was kind of their biggest mainstream type breakthrough. Um, so if you're okay going with American Idiot, we can lock in with that. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Well, he said sleepest, so I thought maybe it came from that Insomnia album. So he said Insomnia. What, what's it called? Insomniac? Insomniac, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that was a, a good reasoning there, um, but the track actually is from the album Dookie. I was going to say, I was like, I bet you this question is a loaded Dookie. It was a loaded <laughs> Dookie. Uh, yeah, I was surprised to learn that is their uh, highest selling album to date, which was their first uh, studio album that they uh, produced and released. So, All right. Uh, so after five in the second round, uh, it looks like Slow Bros uh, have uh, built themselves up to 120 points, but uh, Porygon still in the lead with 150. And uh, your clues, uh, Brooklyn, New York, Underoos, Hutch, Jesus, and Dookie. Let's go to number six. Debuting in September of 1953, this fictional comics character, created by Alfred Harvey and Warren Kramer, has been adapted as an animated series, live action series, and was most notably played by actor Macaulay Culkin in his last film as a child actor before he returned to the screen in 2003's Party Monster. Um, well, we can we can lock in. I really don't know on this one. I have no idea. Let's just say Robin. Okay. All right, Robin for Slow Bros. And uh, what do you think in Porygon? Um, I'm pretty sure this is Richie Rich. Oh. <sighs> Richie Rich is correct. I didn't even think about that angle. I kind of forgot that was a comic. Yeah. I, like, my, I think my husband mentioned to me that that was a comic one time. And then, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't... I, uh, I one, also forgot it was an animation. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, versions of it. Uh, animated series, live action series, and wasn't one of his most successful um, films. Uh, and that's probably why he stopped acting for a while. It was successful in my childhood eyes. Well, yeah, that's all that matters. Me too. I like that he had his own 24-hour McDonald's, which makes no f***ing sense. Yeah. Well, Do you remember that? Yeah. I wonder if those... I would think the workers are paid a decent wage there. Maybe not. All right. Uh, so, yeah, great job by uh, Mary and Matt. They got points on that question. Uh, let's go to number seven. Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian, wrote the book The Histories, which featured writing on the lives of such figures as Cyrus, Darius and Xerxes, 
and chronicled many battles in what series of conflicts? And correction, uh, just for everyone, uh, Herodotus did not write about Billy Ray Cyrus, just Cyrus. Well, because Darius, Thank you for clearing Darius that is up. Xerxes' father. Let's, right. just, let's just say the that, okay. that okay. wars. Okay. I mean, I think this has something to do with the Persian Wars, but I, I don't know if there's another name for it other than Persian Wars. Um, that's that, that's what I got. Okay, we can. I'm good with that. I don't. I don't have any other answer. So we can lock in with Persian Wars. Yeah, I thought it was as simple as the Persian Wars. Uh, Jeff thought it was more complicated than that. Um, but we said Persian Wars because all I know about it is that Xerxes had some awesome facial piercings in 300. He did indeed. Uh, yeah, and the answer is uh, Greco-Persian Wars or Persian Wars. Yeah, I was overthinking okay. it a little bit. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, everyone's uh, finishing strong here. So let's go to question eight. It's not too late to drop the ball. It is not too late to drop the ball. Um, all right. What Broadway-bound musical that will feature songs such as 10 Years, Business Woman Special, and I Invented Post-its is based on a 1997 cult comedy film of the same name featuring an Oscar winner and an Emmy winner in the title roles. All right, so these guys are locked in. Um, what What do you think? Probably the, you said Business Woman Special. So probably the names of two women in the title, uh, Romeo and Michelle. <laughs> That's kind of a cult classic comedy. Yeah. What What year did he say? 1997. That sounds about right. It could be. I always right. thought that movie was a year or two earlier, but that actually could be. We're going to say Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion. <laughs> All right. And mm-hmm. Mary, what Ten years. Ten years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I was thinking, Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion. Well, the Emmy... Mm-hmm. They the, invented post-its, Emmy reunion. That's correct. Uh, the Oscar winner uh, was for Mighty Aphrodite for Mira Sorvino, and the Emmy was for Friends for Lisa Kudrow. The answer is Romeo and Michelle's nice. high school reunion. Nice, Ken. The return of the reservoir. <laughs> so uh, based on these scores, everyone is having a Romeo and Michelle day so far. Uh, all right. Number nine. What fashion brand, popular in the early 2000s, is known for their signature velour tracksuits, celebrity endorsements, and bedazzled behinds? Their logo features two Highland Terriers holding a shield with the phrase, Made in the Glamorous USA. I assume Matt is locked in. (laughs) Yes. Maybe FUBU? Could be. Bedazzled behinds? Is that what you said? Bedazzled behinds, yep. So it's not like eco- or Jinko, or Kangle, the Lord. I think maybe Fubu. <laughs> okay, we can go Fubu. I don't know what the the logo of Fubu is though, but maybe it's that. Um, a staple of Paris Hilton and that type of that era. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is Juicy Couture. Is that right? It is Juicy oh. Couture. Mm-hmm. Yep. Darn uh, it. If you remember the bedazzled Juicy uh, on the back I of did pants. Know that. Yeah. Sorry, Ken. Yeah. I didn't know that was a brand. So yeah, I didn't either. I'm all good. Yeah. All right. Uh, last... I was a fashionista back in the early 2000s. You were. You took inspiration. U- usually Those it was. Van shoes and. No, usually it was uh, zip off pants, mm-hmm. you know, the kind where they convert into shorts. And uh... Matt, do you have any Juicy Couture uh, velour tracksuits? I had a South Pole velour tracksuit. Ooh, I remember South Pole. All right. Uh, I could only afford a North Pole, but um, just wasn't as cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wasn't juicy enough for any of that. You're juicy now, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've, we've left you in the oven just long Because I haven't showered. Yeah. Yeah, it's the pheromones, though. Uh, number 10 in the second round, last question of regulation. Miriam Webster defines this word as to hold the attention of as if by a spell. It's a definition that literary character Svengali would not need if he was a spelling bee contestant. We are going to go ahead and lock in here. I have somewhat of a guess. Mm, what do you think, Matt? Um, so the definition was to hold attention or something like that. Uh, I was thinking either captivate or mesmerize. Those are the two that came to my mind. Okay. Yeah, those those both sound really good. To hold the attention of as if by a spell. So maybe mesmerize. Yeah, if you want to lock in that one, I think that's good. Yeah, that sounds good to me. We too said mesmerize. 
you both were very close, um, and unfortunately oh. is not mesmerize. Uh, so mesmerize uh, is usually to exercise mesmerism on, or to spellbind or enthrall. Um, but Svengali, the character in in the famous book and the story, uh, he hypnotized uh, his subject, uh, mm-hmm. which put them under hypnosis, which is different than hip, uh, mesmerize. <sighs> So close. I disagree with the judge's assessment, but since we both missed it, I'll uh, I'll let that one go. Mm, no, it feels like two parts mm. of the I'm gonna re- of a Down you, album. You know what? I'm going to resent Neil for the rest of my life over that <laughs> <laughs> All I'll say is yeah. uh, Svengali did not mesmerize. He hypnotized. So that's why I put Svengali in there. So there would be no questions about that answer. But anyway, uh, all right. So your <laughs> clues uh, for the second round, listeners, Brooklyn, New York, Under Ruse, Hutch, Jesus, Dookie, Richie Rich, Persian, Romy and Michelle, and uh, Juicy Couture and Hypnotize. I have no idea what this is. All right. Uh, Let's get to the final round. Uh, Here are these categories real quick uh, so I can see what you're going to wager. But in order to do that, we have to get our scores, which are still kind of close. We have Slow Bros with 140 and uh, Porygon with 190. So anybody's game still. Within reach, but not not that close. Not that close, but yes, anybody's game still. Here are your final round categories. Number one, a common thread. Number two, angry Larry Birds. Number three, fashion imitating art. Number four, Peter Roger and Bugs. And number five, modern times. All the wagers are now locked in. I'm going to read these uh, questions, and uh, we'll see how everyone does. Number one in the category of a common thread. The 17th and current operating system for Macintosh computers, the nickname of the state that calls Helena capital, and the title of the movie which became the first film directed by a woman to gross more than $100 million all have what word in common? Number two in the category of angry Larry Birds. Introduced in professional basketball in the 1990 to 1991 season, this act of excessive or violent contact against an opponent during the course of a play, whether unintentional or purposeful, is known as what? Number three in the category of fashion imitating art. Barbara Kruger, a conceptual artist known for her subversive, bold, or philosophical statements on feminism or anti-capitalism, once called what famous skateboarding and hip-hop lifestyle brand a cluster of totally uncool jokers after many saw a striking resemblance to her work on their now famous logo some say it's just a love child of fashion and art and the debate hasn't been taken to court just yet but it's hard to deny the direct similarities when the logo uses her signature red box and bold white futura text number four in the category of peter roger and bugs Music artist Bad Bunny has had two back-to-back years of breaking records and achieving firsts. Among his many achievements on the charts and in the WWE ring, Bad Bunny not only became Rolling Stone's first Latin urban artist to grace their cover, but then topped that by becoming only the second male ever to star solo, fittingly, on the cover of what iconic publication's first digital issue? And number five in the category of modern times... The Hans Wilsdorf Foundation provided assistance to many famous thrill seekers throughout history, including Mercedes Gleitz, the first British woman to swim the English Channel, Sir Edmund Hillary on his climb of Everest, and James Cameron as he explored the depths of the Mariana Trench. Despite being registered as a charitable foundation, the foundation makes loads of cash with products such as the Sea Dweller, the Yacht Master, and the Oyster Perpetual, sold under what more recognizable name? We got that one, Gun. All right, we have the questions. Let's see if we have the answers. We'll be right back. All the answers are now locked in. Let's go through these questions one more time and get to the competitors' answers. In the category of a common thread, the 17th and current operating system for Macintosh computers, nickname of the state calling Helena Capital home, and uh, the title of the movie, which became the first film directed by a woman to gross more than $100 million, have what word in common? Let's go to Porygon. Uh, what is your answer and wager? Uh, we wagered 20 on this one. Um, I think that the state is the big sky state. I'm pretty sure that Penny Marshall directed big. I think that this is big. Yeah. And we uh, wagered 15. We think that the current operating operating system might be big, sir. Uh, so we said a big as well. Points to everyone. 
That is correct. Big Sur, Big Sky Country, and the film Big. All right, number two in the category of Angry Larry Birds. Introduced in professional basketball in the 90-91 season, this act of excessive or violent contact against an opponent during the course of play, whether unintentional or purposeful, is known as what? Slow bros? Uh, for zero on this one, um, in hockey, it's known as roughing, so we said roughing as well. Okay, and Porygon? Uh, we wagered 30, and I think in the future it'll be called the Draymond, but for now they're calling it a flagrant foul. Points to Porygon. It is a flagrant foul. I was foul. wondering about that. I was thinking about that scene from The Office where Michael gets hit, and he calls it a flagrant intentional personal foul. <laughs> <laughs> he, he covered all the bases. <laughs> All right, uh, number three was in the category of fashion imitating art. Uh, basically, to bring it down and, and whittle it down here, basically, I was just looking for the name of the famous skateboarding and hip-hop lifestyle brand that many think ripped off artist Barbara Kruger. Uh, so what did you have, uh, Porygon? Mary? Oh, um, okay. Uh, we had, well, Matt knew this one. Uh, it's uh, Supreme. Oh, uh, we have a different answer on this one for 15 points. We said Obey. Great guesses. Obey uh, also kind of uh, was inspired by Barbara Kruger. But uh, if you had the clue, uh, if you found the clue in the question of uh, Love Child, which is a song of the Supremes, and they haven't gone to court yet, the answer okay. is Supreme. Okay. Uh, number four in the category of Peter, Roger, and Bugs. Uh, Bad Bunny has been on uh, some covers recently, and he's been breaking records. But I just wanted to know... Uh, what is the magazine or publication that he was the second male ever to star solo on? And let's go to Slow Bros. No idea on this one, so we just guessed Teen Vogue. Okay, and Porygon? Mm. Uh, Mary, you had this one. I did, actually. Uh, this was, I think, the only one I had. Um, we wagered 20, and uh, it's Playboy. And uh, as I said, fittingly, Bad Bunny on the cover of Playboy. Mm -hmm. Oh. 20 points. All right. And our final question of the game. The Hans Wilsdorf Foundation provided assistance to a lot of thrill seekers, uh, and they're actually a charitable foundation despite making a ton of money, but they do have products called the Sea Dweller, the Yacht Master, and the Oyster Perpetual, among others. What is their more recognizable name? For 15 points. Uh, I believe this. Uh, those are all products of Rolex. And Porygon. Hmm. Yeah, we weren't sure. We wagered 20 and went with a different high-end luxury brand and said Tesla. The answer is Rolex. Okay, all the scores have been tabulated. And for the listeners at home, your clue answers are Big, Flagrant, Supreme, Playboy, and Rolex. The final scores, Slow Bros with 140 points. But today's cream of the crop, all the stones collected, Porygon with 260 points. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Mm. Good oh my gosh. Wow. wow. I know when we've been well and thoroughly lick a tongued, Ken. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, Mary, you uh, you did a great job. I know you said, had some reservations before we started about uh, being nervous, but you you did a great job as a competitor today. You were a lot of fun to hang out with. Uh, any any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, anything you want to talk about? Let it fly. Um, well, just thank you so much for having me, um, on the show. This has been really fun and, um, I couldn't have done it without Matt. Like he, we kind of seem to, um, be able to cover each other's weak areas. So that was really cool. Um, this is awesome. I guess I'll shout out to my husband, Jeff, um, cause we listen to the show together and I'm sure we'll listen to this one. Um, strong name. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And he, he also has a beard. So, um, yeah, th this has just been really great. So thank you so much. Our pleasure. Thank you so much for not only supporting us on Patreon, uh, but for spending some time with us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And a uh, great game, everyone. Uh, if you, um, think you know the theme, make sure to email us. And after two weeks, uh, any correct guesses will go into a raffle and we'll, uh, raffle off a t-shirt. I do want to say a big thank you to Louis de Rojas, uh, for play testing this, uh, Eric Ede, and then also, uh, Eric Walling both of the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcasts uh, for uh, giving these a read through. Uh, yeah, and uh, for Jeff, Ken, Matt, Mary, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. I created that character, Peter Parker. It's like Stan Lee, like over your shoulder <laughs> trying to play Nintendo, just bugging you. 
Have you ever had a churro? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's a delicacy from, <laughs> from Spain. Okay. All right. Um, 